We're here at the offices of the Union of East Indian Chiefs. We're just minutes ago, the press conference wrapped regarding the situation that's unfolding in the Wet'suwet'en Territory. Joining me today is Harsha Walia, the new Executive Director of the BC Civil Liberties Association. Congratulations on your new post. Thank you, Tina. What would you like to say about what's unfolding right now and what we're seeing up north? Yeah, I think from our perspective at the BCCLA, we're extremely concerned about what is happening in Wet'suwet'en territories. Uh, we see a continuous violation of Wet'suwet'en rights and title. Um, in particular, this past week, we saw the implementation and RCMP enforcement of an exclusion zone at the 27 kilometer mark. Um, and yesterday, we assisted two people, uh, Cody Merriman and Dali Alexis Nickel. Um, but, uh, Dali is a member of the Gidimdim clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. Cody is married into the nation um, and he was himself a member of the Haida Nation. And we assisted them in filing complaints uh, with respect to RCMP misconduct, uh, which we maintain as RCMP misconduct and they maintain as RCMP misconduct by virtue of the fact that an exclusion zone exists on their territory. Uh, Dali Alexis Nickel was very clear in asserting her rights as a Gidimdim woman to cross through uh, the checkpoint and to cross into the exclusion zone. Both of them were carrying food and winter supplies through to the camp, uh, which the RCMP in their press release stated would not be an issue, but they were both denied access. This is, of course, also a violation of their charter protected rights. Um, so for us, we see the exclusion zone as a huge and serious violation of charter protected rights to freedom of association, to liberty, to mobility, um, to not be arbitrarily detained. And so violation of these rights are serious. They have to be taken seriously. And so for both Cody and Dali and other people who are also denied at the exclusion zone, including reports of reporters being denied, um, this is a very serious violation. The RCMP, uh, in our opinion, has, has in this case, um, instituted an exclusion zone that is arbitrary and unnecessary and reinforces a criminalizing approach to dealing with Wet'suwet'en rights and title and Wet'suwet'en jurisdiction. And we're concerned, especially because of what happened last year in the investigation, both the militarized raid that occurred and reports that came out after suggesting that the RCMP was planning and potentially engaging in lethal force against people. And so for all of these reasons, uh, we call on the RCMP exclusion zone to be dismantled and in particular for the provincial government and the federal government and Coastal Gas Link uh, to come to the table in a good way on a nation-to-nation -nation basis with the Wet'suwet'en in order to resolve this peacefully. We've had organizations such as the Canadian Association of Journalists, mm -hmm. Amnesty International, among others, uh, unduly lend their support in terms of offering uh, you know, uh, solutions for this situation that's unfolding. What are your worst fears uh, that we could see in the next coming days? I mean, I think the worst fears are several fold. One is, of course, another militarized style um, excessive checkpoint and raid uh, happening on Gidimdin territories. I also think there is serious issues of physical safety. Uh, you know, members of the Wet'suwet'en Nation have said the fact that they were denied winter supplies, denied food, uh, the RCMP exclusion zone not allowing food and winter supplies, and also puts people at risk of their health and their well-being. So we can also see a kind of chronic long-term impact uh, in people's well-being. And of course, you know, just the compounding impacts of what it means to continuously have to affirm and assert rights and title um, and to be denied that. Um, you know, I've known Frida Houston for 10 years, and she's a strong, amazing, incredible woman. And I also worry about the impacts of what this constant fight puts on people like her who should not have to be, um, you know, who should not have to hold so much. And I think there's, at a basic human level, people also have the right to live uh, under, you know, with, with dignity and self determination. And so for me, it's also the long-term impacts of the Wet'suwet'en having to consistently fight in the courts and fight on the ground. Um, that's also equally worrying in addition to the kind of immediate impacts of our scene, potential RCMP action. Absolutely, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. APTN National News will be staying on top of this story as it unfolds. Back to you in studio.